All right, so this is going to be a spoiler-filled review for the movie Halloween Ends, the 2022 slasher movie, the finale of uh, David Gordon Green's trilogy. Now, this video is uh, mainly uh, cathartic for me, so I can get why it sucks so badly, because I gave the movie a 0 out of 10 in my uh, non-spoiler review. But also, if you're someone who's on the fence, or they want to know why, or just want to be spoiled, then this video is for you. So Halloween Ends uh, starts with a new character named Corey Cunningham. The year's 2019, he's 21 years old, and he babysits a young boy while his parents are going to a Halloween party. Uh, however, he gets tricked into going to the attic as a prank, and then the kid locks him in the attic. And uh, when the parents come home, he gets embarrassed, so he tackles the door, sending the kid flying three stories down to his death so he sort of villainized um, we don't really know if he did prison time or not uh, he might have gotten away with manslaughter or an accident but uh, anyways he bumps into Allison Nelson the daughter of uh, granddaughter of uh, Lori Strode Lori is now uh, sober She's in a better place. She's completely different from the, the person she was in the first film. Uh, she's sort of healed a little bit and moved on. She wants to be a normal, cool grandma, bake pie. She lives with her granddaughter and introduces Allison to the young boy when he gets um, picked on. I think he's now he's 24. Uh, he's getting picked on at a convenience store. And uh, she helps him out and uh, introduces him to Allison, and they hit it off. Um, at first, he doesn't like... You know, the fact that she's trying too hard, but then she, you know, eventually wins him over by saying that, you know, she understands where he comes from because people sort of see him as a monster. They see her as some sort of like hero girl or something. So they develop a mutual bond because of that. And this takes up a large chunk of the movie. Um, this doesn't feel like a Halloween film at the beginning. But then um, after... Corey bumps into those bullies again. They uh, push him over a ravine of sorts and he gets knocked out and he gets grabbed by Michael Myers, who's in a sewer and he's like weak or something. I, 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 as soon as this scene happened, I think my friend, the one who's a super diehard Michael Myers fan, kind of groaned because Michael Myers, you know, he's been, he's disappeared for these last four years and people don't really know where he is. He's been living in a sewer under an overpass, I guess. And um, he's about to kill Corey, but then he bonds with him supernaturally. And I think this is where most people didn't like the, the supernatural aspect, you know, it's, it was too literal. So uh, he lets him go, and then a homeless man attacks Corey, so Corey fights back and kills him. And it's insinuated that Corey is now, like, possessed or, like, you know, a dark apprentice of Michael Myers. And Laurie can sort of sense this, too. So that's kind of, like, the, the tension and conflict between those two. And, um, you know, they have the romance stuff developing, too. Allison doesn't see the growing darkness in Corey. But he brings Michael, his first victim, to sort of get back his mojo. And I thought... This, is, this isn't too bad. I'm guessing the kid's going to start feeding Michael more angsty kills to sort of fuel his bloodlust in order to get back his mojo, and then he's going to go after Lori. But that's not what happens in this movie. Um, basically, after uh, Corey lures a victim for Michael, Corey attacks Michael, who's still in a weakened state, beats him up, and takes his mask to become the new Michael. So after they do a kill together, um, they go their separate ways now. Corey wants to become the new Michael, so he takes the mask, and he goes after uh, Lori, because Lori is against Alice, uh, Allison and him being together, and they have their, their final showdown. And I think this is where people were like, oh, okay, this is where all the trailer stuff happens, where you get to see the finale between Michael and Lori. So Lori shoots Corey a couple times, finishes him off, uh, and then he commits suicide um, to as a final f you to 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 lori and then of course allison walks right in as that happens it looks like lori killed Corey, so she runs away michael shows up and she's you know not like the badass lori from before you know she doesn't have like a, a house made with traps or whatever or shotguns around every corner she's just grandma lori so they have their climactic finale in about two minutes in which lori is able to pin him down with two knives and in, in his hands on the kitchen counter throw a fridge over his legs and then slit his throat slit his arm and then uh tie him to the top of a car like a deer drive him throughout town and we get cameos from all the people from halloween kills they follow in a big grand funeral procession drive out to a car junkyard and then they throw they they jesus not jesus they they cool hand luke 
lift him or they, they, they body surf Michael into a car crusher where his body is completely incinerated on screen and you see his head pop like a grape. Um, you know, honestly, this is the type of movie that all fans would dread to watch. That To see a beloved icon, a beloved slasher villain be disrespected throughout the whole movie. Um, kind of like in the same way that Laurie Strode wasn't in Halloween Kills very much. She was like, I think she was stabbed at the end of uh, the 2018 film. So she was in the hospital for most of uh, Kills, but she was like sidelined by the mob. So she's only in like Halloween Kills for like 10, 15 minutes. The same with Michael in this one. Michael's barely in the film except for when he's in the sewer and when he's in the movie at the end. He's weak, he's lame. There's no cool theme. This, this movie feels like two movies put together. There's like a dark romance with Corey and Allison. And then there's the Michael Laurie showdown and that just sort of seems tacked on, obligatory. It's not even satisfying. You know, even if the last 10 to 15 minutes was a brutal, awesome finale in which they both kill each other or literally anything else happens in this movie, then the movie probably could have been a, a redeemable, you know, finale. But this movie, it honestly feels like the writer-directors didn't know what they wanted to do. They had an idea for a reboot, and then they made kills, and then they couldn't really top kills, so they just said, let's just get creative, take a creative risk, and the creative risk blew up in their faces, and it really, it really didn't pan out the way they thought it would. And uh, I'm pretty sure everyone in the theater was pretty defeated and uh, not elated at all after the credits rolled. I mean, they even have like a final shot of just like Michael's mask just sitting on a coffee table, like a, like a magazine. It was just, they really didn't know where they wanted to go with this movie, basically. They, they weren't sure if the mask was evil or if Michael's evil and can infect people because they're kind of going with that. And then you're, they're, they're, they almost felt like they were trying to juggle multiple storylines. Like, what if, you know, Michael can infect someone like a, like a cancer, but then not really. And then, you know, Corey just takes the mask anyway. And then, like... You know, or you know, honestly, I would have been, I would have preferred the whole week Michael needs to get his mojo back. He needs more victims. It would have made sense for the story to go kind of like this. After Corey, um, so basically, um, Allison's ex is like this really possessive cop named Doug who keeps bothering her. So uh, Corey basically lets the cop follow him to the sewer and lures him down there where Michael kills him to get his mojo back. And then he'd have to get more victims for, for, Michael to sort of, uh, you know, get his mojo back. So there are the four bullies, the marching band bullies. He should have lured them to the sewer as well. And then having all four of them should have like brought Michael back to his full power. And then Corey should have like, I don't know, asked or begged or like commanded or something to try to, you know, wants to use Michael to kill Lori so that nothing stands in his way to getting Allison and then have him be like a sort of dark apprentice, like full on, not take the mask, not... I also noticed the violence in this movie, they, they really like held back on some of the kills, they cut away. It's not even like a decent slasher in its own right. It's not a good Halloween movie. It's not a good finale. The movie just totally drops the ball. And that's why I didn't really like Halloween Ends. I don't think anyone enjoyed this movie. There, there are probably some people that do for some reason, but... Um, yeah, this movie drops the ball entirely. And those are my thoughts on Halloween Ends.